Hi, I'm Rebecca Kemp Brent. I like quilting, I like software, and this is a great project for putting the two together. Not only that, but I found that I often am in the position where I need a quick gift, something that's not going to throw me over budget, and something that will still be useful to the person that I'm giving the gift to. So sometimes I go with staple items like placemats. Almost everybody either uses them or could use them, and I'd like to show you a really fun way to take a quilting motif and use that not only as your decoration, but also sort of as your quilting pattern. So I'm at my machine with my quilting software, and I'm going to go into an area called Pattern CAD that lets me manipulate my quilting designs. And I could actually start from scratch, but it has some great tools built right in. So I'm going to start with an icon that says EZ, and then there's something called Bow Ditches. And that, I, you don't know what that means necessarily. So it's these sort of gently swirling lines. And you'll notice that there are three different numbers on the right side of the screen. The best way to find out what those numbers do is just to manipulate them up and down and watch how the design changes as you change the numbers. Some of them are maybe not so much what you want to use for a placemat, but it's also possible to get some really great designs that are more or less rectangular that look just like something you'd want to put on your table setting. So you can play around with those, or if you're like me and you've done a few of these, you can set the numbers to something that you know is going to work well, like 7, 10, and 13. I know that's one that I've used before. So I'll set my machine up, set my software up for that, and then touch quilt. Now, I'm not going to save my pattern because I've already done this and I've already saved it, but it's always a good idea at this point to save your design. And I like to give it a name with something like placemat 71013 because that way I can remember exactly what it is even before I open the file. And if you're making a set of placemats, two, four, even more than that if you really want to get into it, then you can either use the same design on all of your placemats or you can manipulate the design and do different things on different placemats. So I've got this in my quilting screen now and I'm going to select the placement method. Very simple this time. I go with one point and corner and what that will do is let me tell this software where the upper left hand corner of my design is and it will position the whole rectangle based on that. Now since I'm only giving it one point for reference then I also need to tell it what size design I want so I'll touch the block the lock icon to unlock it. That means that I can change the aspect ratio the um, relationship between the width and the height and I'm going to make my placemat design 10 and a half inches high and 16 inches wide. Then I'm going to tell it to enforce that and I'm going to lock it in and click OK. And you can see I've already stitched one design so I'm going to place the second one at least two inches away just to be sure that I have enough area for finishing my placemat when I'm all finished with the stitching. And then I'm going to select that as my starting point and move over to about the place where the design will start stitching and pull up my bobbin thread. You just hold on to the needle thread as it cycles through automatically. And then it's going to move the machine out of the way. So with just a little gentle tug, it brings up the bobbin thread as well, and I can hold both of those threads while it starts to sew. Then I press sew. And here we go. You may have had a toy that did something similar if you're about my age. Um, I think you can even still play with those toys now. But it's a fun way to experiment with the relationships of the lines and it's one of the great things about using a computer. If you don't want to do this with your software, you certainly could use any other quilting motif. 
free motion quilting or you could use a stencil. So there are lots of possibilities for creating the design. You just want to keep it within that sort of rectangular framework. And this is a fairly narrow piece of fabric, but when I made these placemats on wider fabric, I have a little bit left here at the end after I've stitched out my two placemats. I really hate to waste that fabric, especially since it has the batting and backing already sandwiched. So what I'll do is make a couple of matching coasters and we'll let this finish sewing out and then I'll show you on the screen how you can make a circular pattern that works perfectly for a glass sized coaster. Okay, since I have some finished pieces to show you in just a minute, I'm going to go ahead and stop the machine now so I can show you how to develop those circle designs for your coasters. We'll just close this screen and then I'm going to clear my pattern CAD screen so I can start from scratch here and go back into easy. This time I'm going to choose spirals and you can see that I have these nice little circle designs and this time they're just two different things that I use to change the shape and the way they overlap with each other. But we'll just pick one of those and then you'll make your designs four inches by four inches and that's going to give you a perfectly sized circle to make some little coasters. Let me take you over to the sewing table so I can show you the steps to finish up your placemats and coasters. One thing I didn't mention while I was at the machine is the threads that I used for the quilting on these placemats. I love to use cotton quilting thread, but another thing you might consider is a variegated thread, <clears throat> especially if, like me, you're using a solid color on the top of your placemats. And another fun thing about the placemats is that you can use a second solid on the bottom, or you can even use a print. And of course you can make the pattern any size you want it to be. This one is smaller and I think it's probably perfect for a tea set placemat or maybe a picnic cloth for a doll. When you get finished stitching out the coasters, this is what they're going to look like. And when they're all finished up, they look like this. All you have left to do once you've finished the stitching on your placemat is to go to your rotary cutting ruler and mat and I'm going to line this up for my first placemat so that it's three quarters of an inch away from the edge of my stitching. And then I'll just cut away the excess fabric. Then after I've made my first placemat, what I like to do is measure it and use exactly those dimensions for the other placemats in the set, even if I have to fudge the amount that I'm trimming just a little bit. All that's left afterward is to make yourself some uh, binding, which can be straight grain for the rectangular placemats, or bias if you're making curved placemats or if you're making coasters. So this is one of those really quick and easy techniques that I think is great to have in your toolbox. So when you need something in a hurry, here's an idea.